our word of today from the Good Vibes book. This is what it says. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. And do not be proud. But be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. My friend, that word comes from the book of Romans 12 from 14 going down. Now, my friend, I understand it could have been your first time here. And I really love and appreciate that gesture of clicking this video. May God bless you abundantly. Now, let me put you up to speed with what the T shall be doing today. First of all, I'm right here on one hitch. And we shall be reacting together to videos. Some type of videos, my friend, that are just uh, extremely interesting. And I wouldn't love you to miss a bit. And all this, my friend, we shall be doing it with the intentions of making sure all our things are united, living in peace, forgiving towards one another, and above all, everybody loves their neighbor the way they love themselves. So, if you think that is possible, my friend, hit that subscribe button and join us on our mission. But there is something else. We acknowledge our creator very much. It's why we also always give thanks to our creator before we begin our show today. So let's do so together kindly. Dear Lord Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful creature that you created, Father. The wonderful soul that have joined us today. All glory and honor belong unto you, Lord. Dear Lord, as you have united us here together, Father, help us to spread this message of love to the whole world. May the, that love also impact and reach our hearts, Father. Help it, Father, to grow in us and guide us through our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Let's dive in good waves. Yes. Lots of love. These products just never stop selling. We're talking about pet products, baby products, home and decor, comfort and leisure, car care products, and plants and gardening products. These are what we call evergreen product categories. Because seriously. How do you know when to end a word with a C or a K? Let me explain. This is surprisingly more consistent than you might realize. K will always come at the end of a one syllable word. So think of a word like think or seek or croak, it ends in a K. However, it ends in a CK if a short vowel comes right before it. Like blah, ah, ah, de, ah, ah, st, I, 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 ah, ah, and stra, ah, ah, ah. If a word has two syllables, two or more beats to it, it will always end in a single C. Lilac, epic, antic, tunic, hectic. And sometimes it's a suffix, I see, which means relating to. So drama plus I see is dramatic. Poet plus I see is poetic or magic, terrific, historic. So it's as simple as one syllable or two. Dry cleaners have special irons that don't have a water tank. Instead, they have water lines that feed steam directly from a boiler into the iron. Plus, most have a Teflon plate on the bottom to protect the garment. This design allows the iron to be much lighter, smaller, and easier to use. And now we learn from the Bible how this creature got here. Hello out there. This video is for information purposes. This is my opinion according to the book of Enoch. So let's talk about this entity right here, which looks like a crocodile or alligator. And it seems to be embedded under a mountain or some sort. Now, when you look at it, it looks like a normal size alligator. But when you pause the screen and you see these trees right here, these are actually trees. These are not plants. These are trees. This thing is bigger 
far bigger than these trees. It's taller and it's way longer than any type of creature that could be on the planet. And as you can see, there's a smaller tree right there. And it looks like you could actually crawl under this thing or walk in a cave of some sort. And there's another tree. So this thing is huge. Whatever it is, I'm pretty sure there's some answers to it. Looks just like an alligator to me, if you ask me. And as you can see above it, there's some more trees right here. So this is definitely not fate. And we will tackle this thing today. And let's get started. In the book of Enoch, this is about Leviathan and Behemoth. And this is chapter 60. If we go down to where it says right here, 60 and 7, where it says, In that day shall be separated from one another two monsters, a female monster, whose name is Leviathan, dwelling in the depths of the sea, above the springs of waters, and a male, whose name is Behemoth, who occupied with his breast a waste wilderness. Notice the key word, who occupied with his breast. Now what creature goes on his breast like that? It is none other than an alligator or the crocodile. Of course, there are some other animals or creatures that go upon a breast, but none of them will match the qualifications of all the details mentioned in the book of Job. Let's go there. And if we go to Job, the 40th chapter, it gives a detailed description of Behemoth. It says, Behold, Behemoth, which I made as I made you. He eats grass like an ox. Behold, his strength is in his loins and his power in the muscles of his belly. Now, we can't verify all of this stuff, but let's go over some of the stuff that we can verify. He makes his tail stiff like a cedar. Let's see what that looks like. So if we look at the tail of this thing, we can see easily that if this thing was able to stiffen its tail out, it would be like a tree. It looks like a fallen tree right now because these look like barks on the tree. So that's verifiable. It does look like a tree if the tail stiffened out. It says the sinews of his thighs are knit together. Let's verify that. Now, for all the men out there who can verify these alligator thighs, because I know you would like a pair of these on your lady. It definitely looks like alligator thighs to me and look like they have been knitted together. As you can see, there are like creases in between the skin of this thing. Who knows what the muscles look like, but it does give the appearance of stitches. And it says his bones are tubes of bronze. His limbs are bars of iron. Let's verify that. Now, as you can see, if these bones were tubes and they were bronze, it would definitely fit the bill. But we're just going to go on the fact that the Most High created Behemoth in the beginning with bronze instead of these bones right here. So this is from a smaller scale alligator. So it would definitely be different than a huge one because the bones would have to be strong enough in order for this thing to be held together. And if you were inside some type of alligator's body, you would definitely feel like you are behind bars with this cage looking skeletal rib section right here. All right, what else does it says? He is the first of the works of God. Let him who made him bring near his sword for the mountains yield food for him where all the wild beasts play. Let's see what that looks like. So I find it very interesting that this creature is in fact near a mountain. It is at the base of a mountain. And as you can see, these are like trees right here. It says the mountain yield its food for him. And he is definitely at the base of a mountain. And it looks like he was looking for food. It says under the lotus plants, he lies in the shelter of the reeds and in the marsh for his shade. The lotus trees cover him. The willows of the brook surround him. Let's look for lotus trees and a brook. Now, as you can see, we see the mountain. Where's the trees? Look at this trees. We don't, I can't verify if those are lotus, lotus trees, but look at this brook. This is some type of brook. Now, I'm not saying it's the same brook mentioned in the Bible, but this thing is near a mountain and a brook. And it is very uh, possible that this creature or this entity is another form of that creature in the Bible called Behemoth. Wow. It also says, Behold, if the river 
is turbulent. He is not frightened. He is confident, though Jordan rushes against his mouth. Can one take him by his eyes or pierce his nose with a snare? So wherever this entity is, I don't know if this is Jordan or not, but it's very interesting that this creature is by this river. Now, I'm not saying this is Jordan River because this is definitely not over there in the Middle East. But I am going to leave that at that. And if you believe this is Behemoth, let me know. But I don't believe this is Behemoth because the real Behemoth will be taken from another land, according to the Bible. I'll make that in another video. And Leviathan will be taken from the sea in the last days. Or either maybe the Most High may wake this thing up. I don't know. Maybe some kind of way the meat is being preserved in it. But it definitely resembles behemoth in the bible and this is another behemoth in my opinion god bless you have a great night or day remember when we could take the batteries out and then at some point they soldered them in because they soldered the batteries in even when you turn the phone off it's not off they surveil us and our kids 24 hours a day people have no idea the extent they're being monitored they're being monitored when they're they have android phones they're being monitored even when your phone is off anyone noticed that barbara o'neill doesn't post anymore what was the real reason she was silenced surprisingly it came down to her opinion on salt you see she was the first to say that most table salt is bleached to make them white this wreaks havoc on the body's kidneys and hydration systems not to mention that our food is then stripped of electrolytes she was also the first to say that most salt comes from dirty salt mines full of heavy metals. What was her solution before she was silenced? Hand harvested Celtic salt. This is the only salt that's hand harvested from the top layer. The difference in essential trace minerals which our body needs and the taste is night and day, meaning we finally eat the salt of our ancestors and get in the electrolytes that our body needs. Did you know that surge protectors should be replaced every few years? Even if yours seems like it's working, it might be time to get a new one. They're meant to defend electronics from damage during common power surges. But that protection won't last forever. With every surge, the components inside degrade. But some models will keep conveying power long after the protection has weakened. Since there's no way to know how much protection is left, every three to five years is a good rule of thumb for replacement. Two years if you experience frequent brownouts or blackouts. You can avoid the guessing game by getting a surge protector with an auto shutoff feature, which will stop working when the protection wears off. Otherwise, your tech is as vulnerable as if it were plugged into a basic power strip. We really don't recommend using those. And please, never plug any surge protector into an extension cord or another surge protector. That's a great way to start a fire. You can't make this stuff up. How is Star Trek related to the next hurricane that may hit Florida or the Gulf Coast next weekend? A brand new one. I'm meteorologist Todd Gross, and I was holding back reporting on this but it's time to start talking about what could become Hurricane Kirk. So this is remarkable. It's the latest GFS model, and it first takes Helene and redevelops it off of the New Jersey shoreline, causes a little nor'easter for New England, then it moves out. But watch this. It takes a hurricane, moves it across Cancun, into the Gulf of Mexico, an upper level system, catches it and forces it at the end to move northeastward towards Pensacola, Florida, and then this is the frightening part. It takes the same track right up through Greenville again and Asheville, and this time moves it towards the northeastern United States in the end. Now this, of course, is very early, but not all that early. We're talking about one week away next weekend, so we have to start taking it seriously when the GFS model and now the European model also showing some signs of this as well. Of course, doing this several runs in a row. Again, moving into the Gulf, threatening anywhere in the Gulf of Mexico, can't say where yet, but in this particular scenario, moves it right up to the same region that Helene affected. That would be terrible. This one has my hair standing on end. Look, it's early, and considering the disaster that happened with Helene, the whole Southeast emergency management teams need to know in advance if this is a real possibility. If there's a chance this is going to happen again, it's time to start taking a hard look at it right now. So I'm not trying to scare anyone. I held off, you know, doing this, talking about this next storm until I saw more evidence of it. Now there's several runs of the GFS model that are doing this. I saw the European model. 
but it, the latest one's not out yet. I'm recording this at one o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday afternoon. Um, but when that comes out, we'll have to take a look at that and see what that one says. Nothing set in stone. It could be anywhere in the Gulf of Mexico, of course. It could die out if it hits the Yucatan Peninsula and rains out there. We don't know yet, but it's enough of a possibility that we have to start taking a very hard look at what could become Hurricane Kirk, which has that Star Trek twist because of Captain Kirk Trekkies. This is something that you should start paying attention to, too. I don't mean to make light of it, but isn't that cool that it's named Kirk? I'm meteorologist Todd Gross. Make sure to follow me for the latest on this and other space and weather news. Fun fact. Actor John Cazale only starred in five movies during his entire acting career, but holds two of the most insane acting records imaginable. First, he's the only actor to have every movie he starred in nominated for the Best Picture Award at the Oscars, with the five movies being The Godfather Part 1 and 2, The Conversation, Dog Day Afternoon, and The Deer Hunter. Second, he's the only actor to have every movie he starred in selected to be preserved in the National Film Registry of the Library of Congress for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant, recognized them as works of enduring importance to American culture. These two records are unlikely to ever be broken, but even with so much critical acclaim, he was only ever nominated for an acting award once, which he didn't win, for Best Supporting Actor in Dog Day Afternoon. No, oh, look at this wonderful giraffe. Hmm, the small one. Oh, just having fun, exercising their feet there. Good vibes. No. Oh. English people, this is how a giraffe looks like, just in case. All right, too often as a math teacher, I see kids come up to me and go, ah, oh, my calculator is broken, help me fix it. So once and for all, let's sort it out. If your calculator is stuck on this true false mode, all you need to do is just clear the calculator. So you press shift, and then we're gonna press nine, which is clear. Now we're gonna press three, which is all. We press equals, which is yes. We press AC, and now we're back again. So. What's 9 plus 10? Still 19. This refrigerator doesn't use electricity. This unique eco-friendly refrigerator is made from two clay pots filled with sand and water. The water evaporates through the pot's pores, cooling the items inside. This 100% eco-friendly cooler can reach below minus 8 degrees without electricity. The unique design allows for a more sustainable and efficient way to store and transport items. Could you see yourself using this for your groceries? Tell me how. I love this. Because this proves that the Earth isn't flat. These lines are perfectly north-south or east-west. But how does it prove the Earth isn't flat? Well, that bottom line is shorter than that top line. Huh? In reality, this is what it looks like. Now what's going on here? Well, if Earth is a globe, then that means any two people anywhere on the Earth, if they go straight north, they end up in the same place, which means from the equator going north, you keep getting closer together. It's the same story with south. Because we have a south pole, if you're in the southern hemisphere and you walk south, you constantly get closer together. On a flat earth, if you walk south, no matter what, you constantly get farther away from the other person. There is a singular north pole, there is no south pole. There is no way around this. If you walk straight south on a flat earth, no matter what hemisphere you're in, you always get farther away. But the fact of the matter is, that's not how it works. In the southern hemisphere, as you go south, you get closer together. This has nothing to do with map distortion, and you don't have to say that, well, Google is controlling this. You can go in the real world, and you can see that if you keep the same longitude, and you go south, two cities in two different places are going to be closer together in the south. You guys lose. This is completely impossible in pizza land. For the record, here are the numbers. The bottom distance is 272.24 miles. The top line distance is 320 miles. I discovered something hilarious while researching this. This is the apartment I lived in when I was in college. That's the longitude right there, negative 98.486. What is directly south of me? The Alamo, perfectly down to the thousandth of a degree of longitude. And that apartment was in South Dakota, so these are really far apart. 
Just a funny coinkadink. Hey, Book Talk. Did you know that some people do not know what deckled edges are and are going around their life thinking that this is a manufacturing mistake and that when they receive a book like this, they leave a bad review? Because I'm going to show you what I mean. Awful quality. Pages are cut up unevenly and rough. How do you even mess something like this up? Well, Michael, I'm here to tell you it was on purpose. Poor quality product. We paid over $16 for a book that looks like a preschooler cut the pages out. This person bought the book twice, thinking that it was defective and received the same correct item twice. They sold me a defected copy. I could keep going. Still going. The quality of the book is poor. Can't fault people for not knowing something. So if you are one of those people, let me just give you a quick history lesson. Pre-19th century, this is what all books look like due to paper manufacturing. These days, when we want to give a book a certain old-timey feel, kind of like a, an old manuscript, we will do this on purpose. It is called Deckled Edges. It is not a mistake. And I, for one, like it. Here are some scientific facts that sound fake, but are 100% true. If you drilled a tunnel through the earth and then jumped in it, it would take you 42 minutes to get to the other side. 42 minutes of straight falling. There are rocks on earth that are older than the moon. I know how the moon was formed, so this makes sense, but hearing it out loud is wild. Not only do octopuses have three hearts, they have nine brains. Each arm has a mini brain that connects to one central brain that all kind of work together. Hot water Water can often freeze faster than cold water. This is called the Mpemba effect. I don't know if I said that right. Under certain conditions, hot water freezes faster than cold water, which is backwards. Sloths can hold their breath longer than dolphins? What? A blue whale's heart is the size of a small car. Like a mini coop. There's a lake in Tanzania that turns animals to stone. It's called Lake Natron, and because of the high alkalinity content, it will preserve dead animals in a rock-like form. If you become conscious enough, you get to see that every single person you know is in some way suffering because they're in some way resisting life, and that this is going to go on until they die. And when you see that, and you see it in yourself, you go, what the heck am I doing here? Particularly when you take away future projection, when you realize that all future projection is actually dream, it's not real. And so people keep themselves away from those feelings by projecting hope that things are going to get better. But hope is a lie. It's not a reality. It's a projection to the future. It's a dream. And so when you come to all of those things and you realize, heck, there's an awful lot of suffering here and I'm suffering too, and there is no future, this is what it is, that gets a feeling inside the seeker goes, I'd like to be out of here. Now there's two ways out. You can kill yourself, but you'll come back and do it all again, and you'll come back with murder on your hands. Uh, or you can wake up. And that's the other way that you don't come back. Enlightened people don't come back. Why does lifting weights cause you all kinds of back trouble? Because if you're lifting weights and you're bending using your spine even a little bit, it overloads the disc. And that overloaded disc over extended periods of time causes the disc to get weaker. Eventually it herniates. That's why people lifting weights can be really good for years and all of a sudden one day, I don't know what happened. I pulled a muscle. It wasn't a pulled muscle. It was a herniated disc. It was bending just enough to aggravate the disc. The key is to avoid bending and using your spine. Lifting weights is not a spine muscle. Core muscles are not movement muscles. They're movement. They're preventing of movements. Movement muscles are the big ones. The glutes, the pecs, the shoulders, those are movement muscles. How to respond when someone says, it was just a joke. People will use the phrase, it's just a joke, or can't you take a joke, as a way to deflect their responsibility for the comments that they just made. It's a gaslighting technique where it becomes your fault for not being able to interpret it as a joke instead of their fault for the comments. So here's what you can do. First, you're gonna ask them to repeat the joke. So you'll say, what exactly was the joke? 
This shows them a couple of things. Number one, it wasn't funny to you. And number two, it asks them to repeat back the words in a way where the context of the moment in which the joke was spoken is now changed. And second, you're gonna respond assertively by saying, I didn't see it that way and I didn't appreciate it. That communicates your thoughts and your emotions and your boundaries with confidence and skill. Hope that helps and follow for more. The tires on the SR71 Blackbird are another example of the clever design and engineering you can find all over the aircraft. The Blackbird had eight tires, two on the nose gear and six on the main landing gear. You'll notice that the tires on the main landing gear have a silver color. Let me explain. Flying at more than three times the speed of sound generates a lot of heat all over the aircraft. When the gear was retracted into the hot wings during flight, the tires had to survive this heat without melting. So engineers added aluminum into the tires during production, and this helped reflect heat off the tires, keeping them cooler and intact. These tires were also filled with nitrogen at over 400 PSI. These special silver tires were good for between 15 and 20 landings. If heat exists and cold does not exist, then what happens when you just start taking away the heat? So wait a minute, are we defining, is the definition of cold the absence of heat? Yes, so I got heat, I can add as much of it as I want, but if I start taking it away, the I'm temperature cool. begins to drop, right. right? Okay, so now there comes a point as you keep removing it, right. where then there's no heat left to remove. And there's a guy named Lord Kelvin, a physicist, he explored what would happen if you remove all the heat from something. If you remove all the heat, what temperature should you call that? Zero. Zero. Fine. So he created a brand new temperature scale where where there is no heat, it is zero. Smart. Therefore, there can be no negative temperatures on his scale. Nice. That there, there it is. So that's called the absolute temperature scale, the Kelvin scale. The named Kelvin in his honor. scale. So the Kelvin scale was developed after the Celsius scale. So the, the Celsius scale already existed. So he said, let me not rock the boat. Let me put zero at the coldest point, but have each interval of temperature be the same as the Celsius scale. Zero Absol degrees Kelvin. Correct. Absolute zero. And that's all you got to do. There we have absolute zero. So now the question is, how do you get there? And so it's all about the removal of, ener of, of thermal energy. What is thermal energy? It's the vibration of particles. Gotcha. All right. So if you have some thing that is a higher temperature than some other thing, and you go in and measure the particles and how they're moving, they're vibrating faster. Gotcha. Okay, so temperature is the average kinetic energy of vibrating particles in any substance at all. Okay. So everything vibrates. Everything so you have a vibrates. solid hunk of iron. Does it have temperature? Yes. Then you get in there and you'll see the, uh, the iron atoms are vibrating. Okay, within whatever lattice they're located, they're vibrating. All the particles, especially in a gas, all the particles are not vibrating at the same rate. Some are faster than others, some are slower than others. And there's, and, and the distribution of these, but as you raise the temperature, all the vibratory speeds get higher. So it's, it's why, for example, when you're boiling water and some water evaporates off the top, how come the entire pot doesn't evaporate all at once? Right. <laughs> Only the fastest moving particles will vibrate. We'll, we'll, we'll jump out. Gotcha. Okay. At any given moment, it's only the fastest ones getting out and all the rest are still in there. And then others populate the fast zone and then they get out. So there's a range of speeds over which the particles vibrate. Now, a, a, a subtle and very physics-y point I have to make. Heat energy is the total energy carried by all the particles. That's gotcha. it. Okay. The total energy. That makes sense. The temperature, however, is the average kinetic energy of the particles. Okay. So in other words, a cup of coffee, hot coffee in the morning, is hotter than the ocean. However, the ocean has more total energy in it. Right, because it's the total sum of all the particles. So it's the total sum of all the particles. So gotcha. I just want to distinguish sort of temperature and, 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 and thermal energy. There's a distinction between those two. That okay. makes sense. All right. Okay. So let's get back to Kelvin. All right. So how do I make something colder? So what I have to do is I need something else next to it that can take the heat away, okay? I put food in your refrigerator. The air around the food is colder than the food, has less heat energy than your food does, so it's taking the heat energy from it. 
Okay. Then what, it, then what does it do with it? It goes through your coils in the back of the refrigerator. And then if you ever hang out in the back of your refrigerator, it's hot there. Absolutely. That heat used to be in the food that you put in it. Right. That's where that came from. See, now what we should do, instead of having an oven beneath our stove, we should have a refrigerator and use the heat to cook on top. And that would make sense. <laughs> it doesn't get that hot. <laughs> I don't know what you put in your refrigerator. <laughs> so it means you need something colder, something with sort of less heat energy attached to the one that has more so that it can basically e extract it. Well, let's keep doing this. And you keep doing, let's get down to like, you know, 100 degrees Kelvin and 50 degrees Kelvin and 10 degrees Kelvin. I keep doing this. And I'm at like one degree Kelvin. I need something colder than that. I, I need something colder to pull away that heat. Right. But if I always need something colder, how am I ever going to get to zero? Yes. This is the challenge. So now it turns out you can take a gas, which is vibrating, okay, at a certain rate and expand it. And that will slow down the vibration of the particles and the gas will cool. You have to put energy to do that, but you can, that, you can do that. Point is, um, you can make things colder, a gas colder, by expanding it. You just keep doing this, okay? You keep doing it. So we, we can get to within like micro degrees of absolute zero, but you can never, philosophically and theoretically, you can never actually get to absolute zero for this reason. Right. Because you need something, something colder than colder that for it to, 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 to hit. Right, okay. exactly. You, you can get like arbitrarily close. Now, there's another problem. Quantum physics takes over. It means in quantum physics, nothing is ever stationary. So it means there's an entire branch of physics that says you may try to stop the motion of this particle, but you will never succeed because there's a quantum vibration that goes on no matter how much heat you've taken out. And this is quantum physics taking over. So the point is, not only is there sort of a classical physical limit to reaching absolute zero, there's a quantum limit that prevents it entirely. Uh, let me add one other thing. Go right? ahead. Okay. So this is, this is just so cool. All right. But I'll let you be the judge. All right. As a particle slows down, you've you heard in quantum physics, you can have wave and particle duality. You might of have course, heard about that. That's, that's oh, light. Oh, Schrodinger showed us that you can have a particle that also functions as a wave. Now, here's right. the thing. As you slow down the particle, right. the wave associated with it gets longer. Oh. Okay? Cool. Now, watch what happens. If you have a system of particles and you begin to slow them down and their waves become longer, there's a point where all their waves match up and the material becomes a coherent functioning new state of matter. Really? And it's called Bose-Einstein condensate. And so this was predicted that if you froze something enough, the, these free particles froze them enough, and there they are doing their own thing, right. doing their own vibratory dance. If you get right. it cold enough, all of the wavelengths will begin to match. And then the entire substance will function as though it's one object. Nice. It's a whole new state and behavior of, of matter. And it happens at those very cold temperatures, below right. one degree Kelvin. So you can shape shift matter? Yes, yes, yes. Holy. Yes. I love shifting it. Yes. And That's it all happens together. And you warm it up, then it goes back to, and you know what it's like? It's like birds that flock. Right. They come down and then they're pecking away separately. And then they, they start flying, then they all go together. Yeah, that movie all scared the hell out of me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a bad analogy, but it's visually similar. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's not physically similar, it's just visually similar. You know what super fluidity is? Uh, when you cool something enough, and once again, you get these wavelengths that match up, and if it's in a fluid state, you can plunge your hand through the fluid, and the fluid just parts in front of your hand, and there is no resistance to moving through the liquid. Wow. It's called a super fluid. Super This fluid. is another quantum state that arises. Then you have superconductivity, where there's no resistance to, to the current of electricity. So, so if you filled a tube with superfluid and there's zero resistance, you could actually travel in that tube at enormous speeds. Yeah, you travel faster than the speed of sound in the, the normal speed of sound in a liquid. That's correct. Right. Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's very, very, 
cool. And, and so it's interesting. Imagine being a funder and some physicist says, I want to play with cold temperatures. And say, what's the point of that? What are you going to learn? It's just going to get cold. And then you realize that matter behaves completely differently under those conditions. And different matter behaves differently from other matter. And so it is, um, it's an extraordinary new place to visit in the world of physics. And who ordered that? Who would have thought that this would, was laying there waiting to be discovered? But it was. That's amazing. Cool. All right, dude, we got to call it quits there. All righty. Chuck, always good to have you. Always a pleasure. As always, keep looking up.